today on Santa Monica Update. Santa Monica Farmers Market celebrates 30 years. But how did it all start? I'm Yana Kay and I'll tell you next. Coming up, find out how Santa Monica is gearing up for a brand new bike center. Come play, relax, and entertain at the Airport Avenue Demonstration Gardens. I'm Ned Rolsma, and coming up, we'll take you inside the dedication ceremonies. We'll have these reports and more news from the City of Santa Monica coming up. I'm Kina Chin. Santa Monica Update, your source for local news in Santa Monica. Santa Monica Update starts now. Welcome to Santa Monica Update. The I Love Santa Monica Mobile has come to town. It's a Ford Escape hybrid that has been creatively wrapped and branded to stand out on the road and at events. It's the latest innovation from the Santa Monica Convention and Visitors Bureau. Keep an eye open for it at the farmer's markets, during holiday events and outdoor concerts. Why? Because they'll be providing information and giveaways. That's why. Visitors Bureau outfits are courtesy of O'Neill Surfwear and the Ford Escape hybrid is courtesy of Santa Monica Ford. Take a look at the Convention and Visitors Bureau website at santamonica.com to discover our diverse and progressive beach city. The Santa Monica Farmer's Market is celebrating a milestone. For 30 years, they've been bringing quality, fresh food to our city. Local farmers, businesses, and the community honored the market's 30-year anniversary in a week filled with festivities and events. Yana Kay has more. The Santa Monica Farmer's Market has provided shoppers with the freshest locally grown produce for nearly three decades. And to celebrate this milestone, a group of farmers, chefs, and other community members came out to mark the occasion. We're going to be teaching farmers how to reach out more to wholesale customers and how to increase their farming and marketing uh, opportunities so fourth generation can come along 10, 20 years from now and continue the markets. But how did it all begin? Well, in 1981, the mayor of Santa Monica wanted to boost the local economy. She decided to close off Arizona Avenue between 4th Street and 2nd Street and establish a certified farmers market in Santa Monica. Opening day had 23 farmers and in the first year the market doubled in size. Our farmers market continued to thrive. It doubled in size the first year. When I came along in 1982 we had over 40 farmers. Uh, the revenues had doubled uh, over the, the past year and it continued to double in uh, revenue. At its peak, the market took up almost two blocks and had 50 farmers selling produce. Because of high demand from residents, the second market opened 10 years later, followed by a third location at Pico and Cloverfield. The fourth location was opened a year later on Main Street. Over the years, the market, though, had to go through some growing pains. The pressures of selling direct to the public had generated a lot of, shall we say, shaky sort of certification on some people who maybe would bring in a certificate proving that they were growing when in fact they were not growing. So we had to establish more stringent controls for the admission of products and producers. Santa Monica, I think, has always done a good job of really being true to the fundamental foundation principle of farmers markets is you need to support the farmers, not the peddlers, but the farmers. Today, all four farmers markets get about 20,000 customers a week, and the markets are home to 150 California farmers, a Santa Monica tradition that officials hope will last for another 30 years. For City TV, I'm Yana Kay. See what's in season and make your next trip to the market more complete by visiting the Farmers Market website at smgov.net slash farmers market. The City of Santa Monica has a new homelessness services website. Whether you're looking for info on how to help or how to get help, the new site gives you a place to learn more about our efforts to address homelessness. Santa Monica's action plan to address the issue focuses on the most vulnerable and chronically homeless individuals. Pulling the community together, the plan aims to connect homeless people with services and permanent housing and to promote fair distribution of resources. Read more about it at smgov.net slash homelessness. Promoting use of non-automotive transportation, meaning bicycling in particular, the city is building a bike transit center in the downtown core. It's perfectly situated near the future terminus of the Exposition Light Rail Line. Tamara Henry set out on two wheels to find out more. Be excited, be prepared. Santa Monica constructs its future. The brand new community bike center is scheduled to be completed this October the very same month that the world population is expected to hit 7 billion, causing just a little bit more traffic congestion than usual. Santa Monica is going through a, a renaissance. 
and the bike center is certainly part of that renaissance and helping ushering in a new mindset as to getting people out of cars, on bikes, uh, taking tours. We're creating a community here of cyclists and people who want to adapt to this lifestyle and motivate each other and, and that's what it's really about. The bike center will serve the local community and visitors alike, providing secure bicycle parking, lockers and even showers with towel service. Become a member for $15 a month or $99 a year. Between the two separate locations, the bike center is about 2,500 square feet and holds about 300 bikes. The bifold doors are by far the coolest thing. When they're in the open position, they're beautiful. I run Sustainable Streets, which is a nonprofit, and so we do bike education, encouragement programs, which also be folded into the center as well. So we're going to be offering our classes through the bike center. And even though there are already a few other bike centers like this around the country, Santa Monica will be the first to offer something a little different. The Segway is also going to be an option at the Bike Center. We wanted to have a multimodal range of products, so as a member you can check out a bike or a Segway, whatever you prefer. We're, we're expecting to have a really great party to welcome people to the Bike Center and then to have a weekend of open house so people can come and try the services. The grand opening celebration and open house is a party you're not going to want to miss. Reporting for Santa Monica Update, I'm Tamara Henry. The party that you are invited to is going to be held at the new Bike Center location at 2nd and Colorado. It happens at 10 a.m. on Friday, October 21st. For more information, log on to smbikecenter.com. Back in 1994, Santa Monica adopted the Sustainable City Plan as a blueprint to help our leaders think, plan, and act more sustainably. In the 17 years since the plan was initiated, Santa Monica has grown into a worldwide role model talking the talk and walking the walk with green projects and programs all over the city. One such project is the Airport Avenue Demonstration Gardens, the newly opened public park where you can play, relax and entertain and get inspired to start a sustainable garden of your own. Reporter Ned Rolsma was on hand at the dedication ceremony. Two, one. The Airport Avenue Demonstration Garden is officially open to the public. This beautiful outdoor park and green space is the perfect spot to picnic, play games, kick the ball, or just kick back. But beneath the beauty lies a not-so-hidden message. The area was designed to give garden goers an up-close and personal introduction to sustainable landscaping and hopefully inspire you to install one of your own. Going green in the garden is the perfect place to make an immediate eco-impact because traditional landscaping techniques are notoriously wasteful, requiring tons of energy and resources for upkeep. Energy efficiency and resource conservation are key goals outlined in the Sustainable City Plan. If each homeowner cut their landscape water use by half, so that's about 100 gallons per day, we could be water self-sufficient. And in fact, the City Council has set that as a goal for the city that we're intending to reach that goal by 2020, right? By 2020, we're going to be energy self-sufficient and we're going to be water self-sufficient by 2020. If we can live up to those expectations and hold ourselves out as an example, other communities are paying attention, other communities will adopt the same kinds of changes, the things that we're doing here in Santa Monica, and that's how you create real change in the world. The Airport Avenue Demo Garden is actually three individually designed and landscaped areas that blend seamlessly into one cohesive park space. Each of the distinct garden areas, play, relax and entertain, have informational signs that provide a blueprint for each space. There's even a QR barcode for smartphone users. Simply scan the code with your favorite barcode reader and you'll have instant access to plant and building material lists, irrigation info, and links to local vendors where you can get it all. Play, designed by Peter Jensen and Doug Schemer, puts an eco-friendly twist on the traditional front yard by replacing costly grass with climate-appropriate turf, creating a space that's tough enough for playtime but easy on the utility bill. So we wanted to keep an open space for for kids to play and to be able to run around on, but um, you know, have it use far less water. And uh, so, what I'm sitting on today is a buffalo grass. It's a native plains grass. There's a, there's a number of materials, including this buffalo grass, and also several carexes and 
and uh, you know different types of meadow grasses that really lend themselves to where we live uh, close to the ocean in the kind of a you know hotter climate where you don't need as, as much water and can really achieve kind of uh, in sometimes far better results. Designer Francesca Cora hoped to inspire calm and comfort with the use of some climate appropriate color in her space called Relax. I love doing um, gardens like this that are just comfortable for the owners, um, that are sustainable, that have beautiful flowers. I love color. Um, I love purples and I love mixing colors. These plants, for the most part, I, I think every single plant in this garden is going to look good all year round. It may not be in bloom all year round, but this is going to look beautiful all year round. Entertain designer Marianne Simon was inspired by the duality of creating a connective environment in the same space that can bring about a sense of peace and solitude. One of the things that is so lovely is you sit on the front porch and you watch your neighbors go by and you can wave to them and the garden uh, creates that common ground, that opportunity to connect to, uh, to the rest of the world and yet feel you know, protected that your garden was an oasis. So whether you're looking for a vegetable garden, a place for the kids to play, a private sanctuary under a tree, or an outdoor room to entertain, the beautiful new Airport Avenue demonstration garden is all of these in one. For Santa Monica Update, I'm Ned Rolsma. Now you can rediscover the agricultural heritage of Los Angeles from the early 20th century. Back then, LA County was the world's leading producer of agricultural products. This rich heritage is celebrated with a special exhibit of long forgotten works of art, depicting scenes of agricultural life in and around Los Angeles. They were created under Franklin D. Roosevelt's New Deal WPA art project. The WPA paintings and prints are on view to the public in the Roberts Art Gallery on the campus of Santa Monica High School through October 14th only. The gallery is maintained and managed by students who enroll for art gallery training. Call 310-395-3204, extension 446 for hours and information. Have you heard about the plans for a universal playground on Santa Monica Beach? It's a playground that will be universally available to all people, disabled or not. The project is underway, plans are being made, and we're waiting to hear your voice. To learn about the playground, just go to facebook.com slash smbuap and watch the video. You'll see how a playground becomes universal and why it's important for children to play with other children who have differing capabilities. Take a look at the video and get involved in the meetings to design the park. The Harvest 2011 Seascape is now available at City Hall in libraries tourism kiosks, and other popular spots in town. The new issue has important government news about Civic Santa Monica, including updates and hours of operation. Look into Connect Santa Monica for info on social services and how to get involved. Read about Sustainable Santa Monica and Green Our Town using the tips on these pages. Get the happenings in Santa Monica, find out things to see and do, including the brain food you'll find at the library. Reading programs and activities for all ages and interests. And you can get it online at smgov.net slash seascape. Happy reading. Well, that's it for this edition of Santa Monica Update. I'm Kina Chin. For all of us at City TV, thanks for watching. Check it out at the Santa Monica Public Library. Congratulations to our very own Farmer's Market. The library has great resources to help you prepare for your next visit to the Farmer's Market. Have a celebration of your own. The book Garden Fresh Meals is a collection of recipes to make the most of seasonal bounties. And keeping it local, you'll enjoy the Locavore's Kitchen. And Eating Local, a cookbook inspired by farmers. Then when the pots are simmering, you might want to pick up a fun farm-based mystery novel like Fruit of All Evil or Farm Fresh Murder. Bon Appetit! For these and other books, audiobooks, CDs and DVDs, check out our online catalog at smpl.org.